Hi guys. Hey everyone. Well, I see uh, some of you coming aboard, guys. Um, I think we are live right now. And if you can see and you can hear me, guys, just type a one in the chat. I'll just type a one in the chat so that I know that you guys are here. But welcome to this Facebook live show called Ask Me Any Stock. So if you can see and can hear me, you are in the right place. But I just want to confirm that uh, you guys can see and can hear me clearly. All right. And things are pretty much set up properly. All right. Okay, good. I think I see a few of you coming on board already. We have, uh, hi, uh, Axel. So keep your comments coming, guys, because even though I can't hear you, I can see your comments. I think we have uh, Jessica here. I think you're asking about DBS, UOP, and some of the stocks that you guys, uh, that you're asking about. All right. So not to worry, guys. We'll cover the stocks that you guys are asking about. I'll tell you where to, um, you know, let me know the stocks that you want. So uh, try not to enter over here because I think if you enter over here, you'll be just lost. Right. But I see a few of you coming about. Hi. Hi, Alice. Uh, hi, Mario. Good to see you here. Okay, one, one, one. Alfred, one. Kenny, one. Uh, David, good to see you here. One, one, one. Hi, Cecilia. Good to see you here. All right. Okay, good. So it seems like this is working, guys. And welcome to this Facebook live show called Ask Me Any Stock. Right? So we have like close to 100 of you on board already. Welcome, guys. And what you can do is uh, we can uh, wait for a bit more people to come on board, right? So help me just do me a favor, guys. Just click on the like and share button. And there should be like a heart shape button. Help me to just like and share, right? Help me to like and share. I think there is a little heart shape button you can press as well. Like and share so that we can reach out to more people and we can try to cover as many stocks as you guys are asking about as well, right? So like and share, like and share. Thank you so much. Uh, this is where you can do it. So I think you can pretty much see like this um, little heart shape coming up. Thank you so much. I think a lot of you have like and share already. Awesome. All right. And what you want to do, guys, is that uh, if you don't want to miss out on any of those uh, live sessions, as well, you know, we do sessions like this, where you can ask me about your stocks, we do a quick coverage of the market, you can go to Overview. I'm not too sure if you're seeing this on your app, but go to Overview on the app. All right. And there should be a little bell icon, right? Go to Overview. I think now you're probably on live chats, all right? But you can see the heart shifts and all that. But you can go to Overview right here, Overview, and there should be like a little button at the top right hand corner a bell icon a notification so then click on it all right and i can receive all live notifications so that when we go live in the future you will not miss out as well all right so good to see you guys here i think we have a lot of you coming aboard already hi sean um hi thomas good to see you here grace george ellen uh welcome and i can see your comments on the screen right here all right so welcome for those of you who have just joined us welcome to this facebook live show called Ask me any stock. Hi, Chrissy. Good to see you here. All right. So let's go ahead to get started right now. All right. So basically, in this live show, um, we'll be covering the stocks that you guys are asking about. All right. Not me. All right. You guys are asking about. We'll do a live poll of some of the Singapore stocks, the Singapore market. All right. Uh, some of the stocks that you guys are asking about. Uh, I'll try to cover as many as possible, maybe about eight or 10 stocks that uh, you guys are asking about. I'll do my best. All right. I'll do my best. And we'll see what happens for, I mean, some of those stocks that you guys are asking about. Whether is it like an uptrend? Could there be more weakness? Is it time to buy? What about a bear market? Uh, this is what a lot of people have been talking about. In fact, I will even cover the market. So a lot of you are asking about it, right? But let me just go on to get started right now. So just a quick um, disclaimer, all right? Whatever they shared today will be just for education purpose only. So please do your own uh, deal diligence as well, all right? The standard disclaimer that we share, all right? And here's what you need to do, right? In order to ask your stocks, right? Let's say I think some of you have placed your stocks there. Um, Jessica, you have placed your, your, your stocks over there, uh, which I think you'll be lost, right? So not try not to ask your stocks in this chat, right? Okay, because you'll be like lost, you'll just move up, all right? And what you want to do is you can ask your stocks in this live poll, right? In this tool called Sledo, right? So go ahead to open a new tab, all right? And you can use your computer as well, your phone, go to www.sledo.com and the code will be AMAS08, um, right? That would be the code right here. Let me just go ahead to um, show it to you. All right, so this is the Sledo app, all right? Go to this website, www.sledo.com and you can join uh, with this code AMAS08. In fact, let me just get the link uh, for you guys uh, so that you can go ahead to just join um, right here. Wait. Okay, so let me just share this link, all right, right here. And this is it, right? So I've just shared the link in the chat. And just click on the link in the chat and you should be able to join this live poll, right? Just click on the link in the chat. I've placed the link right there. Some of you have came on board already. A little live poll just to engage you guys a little bit, all right? But if you're seeing that, you're in the right place, all right? So go ahead to... Um, Slido.com, the code is AMAS08, or you can simply just click on the link that I just placed in the chat, right? So once this is done, guys, just type done so that I know that 
you guys are already in this live poll and kind of like taking part in this live poll. Let me know, type done once that is done or just give me a like, all right, so that I know that you it's all working fine, all right? Okay, so let me just go ahead to show you this live poll, right? So this is a live poll right here and you can simply type the name, right? As I say, you can simply type the name, uh, I mean, not the name, I'm basically just let me know what is your, your thoughts on the stock market right now. All right, so you can join us at stilo.com. The code is AMAS08 right here. All right, this, okay, let me just go to remove uh, this thing here. All right, and you can see it, right? So yeah, I think some of you have came aboard already. We are slowly more and more people are coming up. So in one word, let me know, um, you know, how is the stock market for you this month? Let me know in one word, right? How is the stock market for you this, this month? Okay, so bearish, right? So yes, let me know, guys. So if you can come like participate in this live poll, you can just simply scan the QR code as well. All right, so you can scan this QR code or you can click on the link that I just placed. Uh, you are in the right place, right? So you can see this is live, guys. This is like happening right now. I think one word, how would you describe the stock market? And I think some of you are saying it's uh, bearish, uh, very volatile, uh, happy. Okay, let me just see. Okay, so a lot of you are looking at it as bearish, all right? So we'll kind of like look at the market to see how it says. So just a few more seconds, guys. Let me know in one word, all right? What is that word for you for the stock market uh, for the first half of the year? Now we are in July, all right? So it's just the second half of 2022. So there's been a really roller coaster, right? For first half 2022. So how has that been, right? How's that been? So bearish at the moment, very volatile. I think some of you are placing your stocks there as well. All right, so don't place your stocks here later. I'll show you where to place your stocks. But okay, I think we have about like more than 30 of you. So good, this is working, guys. So you're in the right place. If you're taking part in this live poll, you are in the right place, right? So let me just go ahead, guys. Uh, would it be okay if I just did a quick sharing of the market? Let me know, guys. Just type, type US, type US in the chat. Let me know, type US in the chat. If you want me to do a quick review of the market to see where we are right now before we dive into those stocks that you guys are asking about type us right so we cover like the us market maybe the dow jones type us in the chat okay so we have some of you coming aboard. welcome for those of you who just joined us welcome to this facebook live show called ask me any stock we have uh, lynette here us us okay good um done done awesome done so Silla dance thank you hi kumri good to see you here as well done okay good so i think we have uh, most of most of you are done already all right awesome Okay, good. So let me just do a quick coverage of the market. I think some of you are asking whether is it like a bear market? Is it time to buy? All right. So uh, let me just go ahead to do a quick coverage of the market. So let me just shift this up right here and we will look at the, the market. Right? So maybe let's take a look at the Dow Jones, right? Let's take a look at the Dow Jones right here. And uh, this is Dow Jones here and trading at about that 30,772, right? 30,000. 772 okay so here it is right now so i think what what's your thoughts guys uh how many how many how many of you think that it is a little bit of a bad market i think some of you have mentioned it's a bit bearish let me know your thoughts guys is it more bullish or bearish for now let me know in the chat comments right is it more bullish or bearish for now for the dow jones for the us market before i go ahead to analyze for you guys Okay, so it seems like a lot of you are saying it's like a bit more bearish, right? Based on the, the comments that I'm seeing, uh, you know, Crystal, you're saying it's uh, bearish, uh, Iris, bearish as well. Lynette, you're saying uh, a bit of sideways, and maybe in the short term as well. Uh, Wolfley, you're saying it's a bit bearish as well. Um, turning bullish, hi, uh, Mr. Go, you're saying it's a bit uh, bullish as well, turning bullish, maybe, perhaps. Silver, a bit more bearish, it seems as well. All right, so let me just go ahead to explain and, and kind of like dive into this uh, chart for Dow Jones. So this is the US market Dow Jones. 30,772, all right? So I think there are many talks about a bear market. I think you have heard it many times. It talks about a recession, about bear market, and it's where the market has sold off. So let me just explain to you what is a bear market. I mean, some of you might be a bit lost, like what, what is a bear market, you know? What does it even mean, right? So a bear market just means that prices have come like sold off uh, from its peak by about 20% or more, all right? So this was the peak we've seen somewhere around like um, January, and you can see that for the Dow Jones, we have come like sold off by about like almost 20% from kind of like hit the bear market territory just about two, three weeks back and we started to see a bit of rebound. So if we kind of like see, um, you know, down just going down from the peak by 20% or more, then we are pretty much in like bear market territory. All right, so there are some signs of a bear market right now because it kind of like touched at 20% but it rebounded. All right, but let's take a look at the trend, right? So let's take a look at the trend right now. You can see that 
uh, in terms of the trend for the mid to long term, there were already some signs of weakness in terms of the trend turning down, right? Somewhere around like uh, April, look at this right here. You can see that this is the 100 days uh, moving average. The red line, you can see we have crossed down below the longer term moving average, 200 days moving average. So both of these lines are pointing down, of course, with prices below it. So definitely there's some signs of a bit of a downtrend in the mid to long term. All right. And of course, we did break certain support levels as well. And the support levels that we broke was like that 32,000. You can see this 32,000 was a little bit of a support. We kind of like rebounded from it right here. Rebounded. Okay, let me just put it in green in color. We kind of like nearly rebounded and we kind of broke down. Look at this right here. When we broke down, uh, the selling kind of like came back as well. And you can see right now we are in this range about that 30,000 to that 32,000. So that is pretty much the range right now for Dow Jones. You can see that this is the range, right? 30,000 to 32,000. And the longer term trend is a bit down, as I mentioned, the longer term moving average are pointing down. And in terms of the short term, right, this 20 days moving average line is still kind of like sloping down, but it's like flattening out a bit. But I would say generally a little bit more down, all right? So a bit more of a downtrend, I would say, uh, in the short term as well, all right? Uh, especially if we stay below this 32,000, we might actually see a bit more weakness, right? Only if we can like break above that 32 and stay above, then hopefully there might be some signs of reversal or maybe eventual uh, bottoming out. But right now, I think there are definitely some signs of weakness and we could potentially even hit lower if that 30,000, right? So 30,000 is a very, very strong, I would say, psychological, important psychological level for the entire Dow Jones. You can see that we have rebounded from it right, in 2020, right? a couple of times, about two or three times. And we neared it like, you know, last month as well, rebounded to like 32 and we came back all that came down as well. Right? So this 30,000 would be a psychological level that's quite key. I think if we come like, you know, go below that level and, you know, sellers start to come back and push prices down, then we can actually see some serious selling coming back again, right? So this is down there. So I see, I would say that, you know, I think all of you would know in terms of the factors affecting the market would be uh, the interest rate hikes that began uh, since March. There are a total of like three rate hikes this year already. So the first one is marked like about 25 basis point, about 0.25%. And it didn't really work. Interest, I mean, inflation is still at an all-time high. And the Fed have come like pledged to be a bit more aggressive and their high rates by another 0.5% and another 0.75%. Five percent. So now it's currently about one point five percent rate hike. I think, but one or two weeks time there will be a next rate hike, which is potentially about zero point seven five percent, right? To kind of like curb inflation, All right? So that has been ongoing for the past few months since January last year. December talks about rate hikes and the markets got a bit jittery, right? But what happens was over the past like one or two months. Uh, there were some signs of economic activity slowing down in the US. We have like the GDP growth number uh, turning negative, like 1.6%. I think uh, when there are two consecutive growth, I mean, two consecutive quarters of negative growth, that's where uh, there could be what we call a recession, right? And that's what people are fearful right now because if you write high rates too fast and then it might lead to recession. And if there's a recession, you will kind of like slow down the economy, unemployment will be hit, uh, you know, and, and demand will be hit as well. And that's the reason why many of those stocks, uh, apart from those tech stocks, are now selling down. All right, so that's pretty much the reason why the market is a bit more bearish this year, not just the tech stocks, but in general, uh, when that talks about recession, many of those blue chips get hit as well. All right. So um, and then you're asking about the Steedo code, um, you can go ahead to www.steedo.com. In fact, the uh, link is right at this page right here. The code is AMAS08. You can see right over there. All right. So this is pretty much the Dow Jones, right? This is pretty much a Dow Jones. And I've just kind of given you guys a quick rundown of what has happened in the market all right over the past a few months and uh are we still in a bear market so i would say that you know in a bear market overall i would not go too far but in a bear market on average you can see prices are kind of like selling down by about 35 to maybe 40 percent all right that is on average for the past like 20 years uh, about 35 to 40 percent so right now maybe about 20 plus 20 plus percent all right so that could be actually let's say potentially more downside especially if we break so the support like a 30,000, we can actually hit lower, right? So yeah, there could be some signs of a bear market potentially happening and we might actually just be at the beginning of it. And in fact, it's really like a few months, all right? So a bear market on average can take about like 10 months to maybe a year or maybe up to 14 months. That's on average, all right? So now it's like only about two or three months. So there could potentially be more weakness, especially if we stay below some of those like critical resistance level, all right? Like the 32,000, 40 down just. All right, so this is pretty much, um, yeah, this is pretty much the Dow Jones right now. So let's go ahead to uh, participate in a live poll whereby we can take a look, I mean, in terms of the stocks that you guys are asking about. All right, for those of you who have just joined us, welcome to this Facebook live show called Ask Me Any Stocks. And uh, for you guys who are still here, just type yes in the comments below. If you're still here, you can still hear me. All right, type yes so that 
I know that you guys are still here. All right, let me know. Type yes in the chat. All right, type yes in the chat. Okay, good. So this is the Slido, right? So in one word, describe the stock market. So a lot of you are saying a bit more uh, bearish, a bit slow, volatile, uh, choppy, very volatile, fascinating. All right, uh, some of you are happy. All right, so this is pretty much the live poll we have done. But now let's go on to the more exciting uh, part, which I think you guys are here. All right, let me know in the Slido app, right? So okay, let me just go ahead to turn off this poll, right? So let me know what are three singapore stocks that you want to be covered today all right so this is where i've done the live poll already all right so what are three singapore stocks that you want to be covered today so this three per person all right what you want to do is just to enter the name and submit so one line one name and hit submit all right just three stocks a maximum all right so i think a lot of you are coming on board already so for those of you who have just joined us and you want to participate in this live poll whereby you let me know the stocks that you want a quick opinion on just go ahead to scan the QR code right at the top left-hand corner, or you can simply click on the link. So let me just go ahead to share the link with you. I'll just place the link in the chat, all right? Place the link in the chat. You can simply click on the link, all right, to take part in this live poll in this um, app that we're using called slido.com, right? So this is live, guys. You can see that this is coming up right now. So just a few more minutes. Let me know Singapore stocks, three, all right? Three Singapore stocks, one nine, one, one name, Submit it right, and you see this is moving, guys. So we have like Wilma. I think Rex is uh moving out. I think you can come like um vote for the one that you're you're looking at as well. All right, so we have uh Chip Ing Sing that is coming out as well. Wilma is coming up as well. Okay, let, let's just see. All right, so this is live. Uh, we have iFast as well. Okay, good, good. Let's see, let's see. All right, so I think that we have some of you guys um typing the name of the stocks right over here, like uh Kim Hing. Uh, and then we have uh, Genting, we have, uh, let, let me just see, all right. All right, so guys, type the stocks, right? So I think some of you are typing the stocks in the chat right over here, like Valuetronics. Go ahead to Slido.com, right? Like what you see on the screen right there. Um, that's where you can join the live point, type the stocks. So that we can do a live point because you type it over here then we are not able to, to see the stocks, right? So make sure, um, try not to type your stocks over here. This is pretty much where I engage you guys, but go to slido.com. The code is AMAS08 to take part in this live poll, right? So I think Jerry, you're saying that capital DC, we go ahead to type it, all right? We have um, Changman, you're talking about Thai beverage. Alfred, talking about SIA. Go ahead to type it in the Slido app. This is like live participating right now. You can see that we have Wilma is changing right now as I'm talking, all right? But those of you who are here participating in the live poll, you are in the right place, right? You're in the right place, right? So go ahead. Just a few more seconds, guys, before we stop the poll, and we'll do a tally of all the stocks that you guys are asking about. All right, Jessica, I think you're typing the stocks over here as well. So go ahead to the Slido app. You can simply scan the QR code or go to www.slido.com. The code is AMAS08 uh, to type the name of the stock so that we can uh, participate in the live poll, right? So type it right over here to take part in this live poll. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. All right, okay, good. So just a few more seconds, guys, and we'll just put a pass, right? So this is what I'm seeing right now on my screen. You can see that um, we have like more than um, 200, almost close to 200 of you on board already, and you're letting me know your stocks. For those of you who have just joined us, Welcome to this Facebook live show. Uh, you've not seen me before, you're new to this Facebook live show. My name is Joey, Joey Choi, top tier reminder and trader in Philip Securities. And uh, thank you so much for being here. But pretty much in this Facebook live show, I've just done a quick overview of the market, some of the factors affecting the market. And right now, we are actually uh, covering the stocks, the Singapore stocks that you guys are asking about. So if you're holding on to any stocks you need a quick opinion on, you have no idea what to do, whether to sell, to buy more, to get out. Uh, go ahead to join the live poll right here. Scan the QR code on the top left-hand corner, or you can simply click on the link that I just placed in the chat. All right, so for the very last time, this is the link to join the slido.com uh, app. You can just click on the link to join the live poll. All right, so just a few more seconds before we call it a day, all right? And I'll just stop the poll and we'll see what are some of the top stocks that you guys are asking about, all right? So very quickly, all right? So I think... <clears throat> okay, let me just write it down. So I think the first one would be like Wilma. I think a lot of you are asking about Wilma number one, Wilma number two. We have uh, Inotech. I think Inotech, like a lot of you are asking about Inotech as well. 
we have a top glove, right? Top glove right here. Wilma, number two, Inotech, number three, top glove. Let's see. I think we have a Rex as well. Rex, I think Rex international all right so type yes guys if these are the stocks that you want type yes in the chat if uh, you are the one that's asking about this stock right so rex international let me just see what is the one rex Vilma top glove we have um samudera so i think that would be samudera shipping or right, one of those pretty good um shipping stocks as well let's see let's take a look and let's just see what, what are the popular ones we have maybe um Okay, let's just see. It's just like jumping here and there. Uh, what about Chip Eng Sing, right? Chip Eng Sing would be another one. I think a lot of you are asking, more than 30 of you are asking about Chip Eng Sing. All right. <clears throat> okay, good. Let's just see, right? So, um, okay, DBS, right? So, DBS, one of the banks that a lot of you are asking, all right, uh, I would say the most uh, that a lot of you are asking about DBS as well. So, okay, let me just go to run through the list of the stocks that you guys are asking about. All right, so we have like Wilma. Inotech, Top Glove, Rex International, Samudera Shipping, Chip Eng Sing, and DBS. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, just one more before we just pause slightly. And then we'll come on to, to take a look at it again once we cover all the stocks, right? So let me just see one more, just one more. Which one is the one that a lot of you are asking about? Maybe we have uh, what we call uh, Geo Energy, right? We have Geo Energy right here that's quite popular as well. I think a lot of you are asking, let me just see how many of you um okay yeah geo geo ng right geo ng is the one that lost game right so just eight stocks for now wilma i know tech top glove rex international samudera shipping shipping Singh, dbs and finally geo ng right so we have more time guys i will kind of like pause this for now all right because it's just coming uh, there's just too many stocks right but i'll just pause it for now before we dive into these eight stocks first and then we have more time we'll come back again we'll do a live poll and we try to find uh, a, a few more stocks, <clears throat> a few more stocks to cover as well. All right. So uh, if that's good, if that sounds good, guys, just type yes in the chat. You can go ahead to look at the first stock. Just type yes in the chat. All right. So let me just pause the poll for now. Right. Let me just go ahead and pause the poll for now. Okay. Good. So yes, yes, yes. All right. Okay. Hi, Kumri. Yes. Awesome. All right. So I think most of you have participated in a live poll already. All right. So I'm glad that you guys have uh, participated in it already. So um, go ahead, guys, to just help me. All right. Um, do me a favor. Just click on the like and share button. Help me to reach out to a bit more people. All right. To like and share button or the heart shape button right here. Thank you so much. So I see a lot of hearts. Uh, appreciate those hearts and likes. Just, uh, thank you so much. All right. So yes, that's what we can do. All right. To reach out to more people before uh, we begin. Yes, 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 yes. Awesome. All right. So it seems like you guys are still here and it's still working. So let's go on to the first stock that you guys are asking about. I think the first one would be like Wilma. All right. So what is Wilma? Let me take a look at Wilma. Let's take a look right now on Wilma. All right. And uh, this is it right now. So this is Wilma. I think Wilma is one of those popular palm oil stocks that a lot of people have been asking me about as well. All right. And you can see that we are trading at about the $4. I think today, we close at about that uh, four dollars. The day low is at four dollars as well. All right, and uh, this is where we are right now. Right, so um, what what do you guys think about Wilma? Is it a little bit more uh, bearish or a little bit more bullish? I think those of you who are asking about Wilma, I think we have like more than thirty or forty of you asking about Wilma. Let me know what's your, what's your, what's the thoughts on on Wilma. Is it a bit more bullish or more bearish for now as we touch that four dollars support level? Let me know in the chat, guys. What do you guys think about Wilma? Right here. A bit more bearish, I would say. So a bit more bearish. Uh, hi, um, JT, you're saying it's a bit more bearish. Um, Chong, you're saying it's bearish as well. So keep your comments coming, guys, because I can place your comments in the chat so that everybody can see your comments. Uh, Lynette, bearish, uh, Tony, good to see you, bearish as well, all right, so let me just go to, to, I think most of you are a little bit more bearish, is this correct, I would say a little bit more bearish for now, let me explain to you why, uh, and I would say that right now, you can see that this $4, first of all, is a psychological support level, and we've been holding above this $4 since like June 2020, so for like two years, now it's July 2022, right, so for two years, we have kind of like approached this, you know, $4, and we have rebounded a couple of times, so this like, one time over here, let me just put this in green in color. One, uh, two, we kind of nearly rebounded. 
uh, you know, four, five, we neared it six times, uh, two weeks back. And now we are pretty much back here again, right? So we are back to this $4 psychological support level whereby, you know, to be honest, we can actually see some good bargain hunting coming back, right? That means buyers can actually come back like what we've seen. You can see that we started to rebound, 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 like, you know, four or five times uh, it nears that level and buyers come out and, you know, it starts to rebound back up. So $4 is where uh, we can actually see some good bargain hunting. In fact, where buying pressure can actually come back, right? But you want to be careful because there are definitely some signs of weakness in terms of the trend turning down, right? So why? Um, look at this right here. You can see that this, um, you know, green line, this 20 days moving average, line is kind of like sloping down all right since actually uh in, in april we kind of broke down at 460 and of course prices went below this 20 days moving average green line with the line sloping down so short term it was just looking a little bit shaky when it broke the 460 450 started pushing down 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 right now and uh, you can see that this green line is a little bit flattening out so in the short term we might actually see some kind of like consolidation right from four dollars all the way to maybe around that 420, right? So maybe it's going to draw another line. And I would say this would be that resistance level. $4 would be like a support level. So that is pretty much the range right now. We, in fact, we could actually you know, consolidate in the short term in this $4 to that 420 range, right? A 20 cents range. A 20 cents range you can see right here because many times, as I say, as we neared that $4, we rebounded, rebounded, all right? And eventually, if we do get above or we break above that 420, yes, then that could be a good thing in terms of more upside. But right now, uh, let's not talk about that. I think 420 would be a really critical resistance. And uh, we're near 420, and sellers are actually coming out right now. So that is the range from $4 to 420. In the short term, we might actually be uh, consolidating right here as the 20 days green line, the 20 days moving average start to flatten out, right? But there are some signs of the trend turning down in the mid to long term as well, right? So look, look at the moving average in terms of the red line. This 100 days moving average was just crossed up previously just a little bit, all right? And right now it's like sloping down. And you see, as we consolidate here, this red line might eventually turn down, right? Might eventually turn down and what we call a bearish crossover back down below the blue line, whereby the trend can turn down again, right? So it's a bit more bearish, I would say. Anything below the 420 is a bit more bearish. But there's one thing I want to share with you guys would, would be this pattern. You can see that this is something like what we call a uh, head and shoulder pattern. Now, let me just draw it for you. You can see uh, right over here, this is like the head, all right, whereby we've got a peak somewhere around like 2021, all right, from March or May. We've got this peak right here. You can like touch a high about 550, 560. And we got this like a left shoulder and we got like a right shoulder as well. So when we see something like a head and shoulder pattern, this would be like a neckline, right? The four dollars would be like a neckline. So right now we are still above this four dollars, right? Which is still holding for now. But I think if we were to break this four dollars, so so far, right? So far, like today, right? Today we can't close at what at four dollars, right? So I would assume that if you can look at the market depth, you can see the four dollars. There would, you know, be there would be quite a bit of I would say quite a lot of buyers just staging there to defend for one four dollars. Uh, there'll be quite a lot of bias the fact that we have rebounded from there quite a few times right but just be careful right because if we do break of course nobody knows whether it does but if we do break the four dollars and we close like you know at about 395 or 96 or you know it just, it just closes down below the four dollars i mean so far all this while over the past two years as i mentioned we have touched and in fact we actually went lower but we came up and we closed back up again all right a couple of times we went down but next day we started to push away from that four dollars and rebounded back up but right now, you can see we are right there. So if you come like close below the $4, stay below over the next few days. That's where you want to be careful. That's where, all right, I would say this bearish head and shoulder pattern, you know, can actually play out and we might start to see more weakness, right? So far, it has not yet happened. So I, I wouldn't know whether it will happen, right? I mean, I don't know whether like tomorrow or next week will like, you know, break the $4 firmly, all right? Sellers just coming out and selling down. Uh, nobody knows. But if that happens, then you want to be careful. If that happens, you want to be careful. I think that's where potentially you might see uh, selling happening all the way to like maybe 380 to 360 that could potentially be the downside move right if we break below the four dollars right? right now it hasn't happened yet so um don't have to be too uh, worried about it all right we'll see because as i say right this four dollars <throat> if we stay above it it's still fine i mean a couple of times as i say we managed to see a bit of a rebound look at this right it went down rebounded all right let me just put this in, in black in color right went down a couple of uh, consortia rebounded back up same thing we might consolidate here and we might actually rebound back as i say we if we do get above the 420 that could be a sign of strength coming back or some upside momentum coming back again but anything below 420 we might just be in this 
short term, you know, four dollars to four twenty, which is the twenty cents uh, consolidation phase. Does that make sense? All right. So that is pretty much uh, Wilma. Right. That's pretty much Wilma. The first stock that you guys are asking about. Right. How many of you want to go to stock number two, which will be Inotech? Type two, guys. Type two in the chat. Uh, you have like followed me so far. All right. You want to go on to the second stock? Go type two in the chat right now. Thank you. All right, so we have some of you coming about. Welcome, guys. Uh, we have Leo uh, typing on Capo Corp, uh, Cyril Gomez uh, typing about uh, Golden Energy. We'll try to cover that as well. Wilma, I've just covered it. Good to see you here, Gomez. And yeah, keep your comments coming, coming, guys, so I can see your comments. I'll place it in the um, on the screen right here so everybody can see as well. Two, 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 two. Awesome. All right, Lynette, 22. Awesome. All right, so let's go on to the second stock, which you guys are asking about. Quite a lot of people are asking about it, and that would be I know Tech. I N N O. T E K. Let me just see. I know tech, right? One of those I would say um tech stocks as well was doing quite well in 2020, 2021. But unfortunately, you can see that the trend has started to turn down since like um last year, all right, May, June, July. There were some signs of weakness as well, become broke certain support level. So this is Inotech right here. Um, what do you guys think about Inotech? Is it a bit more bearish or bullish for now? Let me know in the chat for Inotech. bearish right so it's a bit more bearish i would say um the answer is yes i would say a little bit more bearish and let me tell you why firstly you can see that the trend has pretty much turned right and you know you have kind of like hit a peak of somewhere around um may to um august right about that one dollar the 95 cents this was a little bit of resistance you can see we touched a couple of times right here right one two three four all right a couple of bearish candle long upper shadow whereby we just couldn't break the one dollar psychological level as we consolidate and we were back to this consolidation then all right look at this right here from about like 85 cents to the one dollar all right just moving up and down up swing up down up down up right here so there were some signs of weakness i would say firstly right over here where we kind of broke down this 85 cents uh, support level definitely when that happened you want to be careful because it's been holding for like about four or five months and we break 85 cents definitely that's where some signs of weakness of the trend uh turning down happened all right and of course from the moving averages as well you could see that this green line the 20 days moving average uh has come like cross down as well below the 100 days moving average when that happens right when you look at any 20 days moving average a short term moving average crossing down below a longer term moving average in this case 20 days below the 100 days and of course both started to point down that's where potentially there could be some signs of the trend turning down right and you can see all the while we are just pretty much pointing down 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 and we form what we call lower highs in fact we can actually draw what we call a uh, downward stop let me just draw it for you guys you can see right here this is like a downward stopping channel resistance line right here forming what we call lower highs so that means as it pushes forward um the highs get lower all right so this is the high right here was the high right the high was here as well we went to a lower high lower high lower high and lower high and this is pretty much where we are right now about 52 cents so forming lower highs as we go to push forward is not a good thing it shows that we are pretty much in a downtrend and as long as we stay below like this red line this this downward sloping channel resistance line i would say that the trend is down so you want to be careful if you're just holding on to it blindly by right if you break certain key support like the 85 cents you definitely want to have a plan to get out especially if the trend has started to turn does it make sense all right so this is where i would say the trend is pretty much down a little bit more bearish and of course looking at the moving averages all right you can see that this rate and the blue line are both pointing down so bearish as well in, in terms of the mid to long term trend right so a little bit more bearish and um yeah we are just like consolidating and pushing lower and consolidating and pushing lower so there's a sign of a downtrend as well right but over the past like two months let me just zoom in to where we are right now about 52 cents uh we can in fact draw what we call another resistance level right here this is like that 55 cents level let me just draw it for you right here 55 cents and uh there's some sort of a support at around that 50 cents level right so this is pretty much let me just zoom it in for you right so this is pretty much the range right now you can see quite clearly over the past two months we have been consolidating all right in a downtrend right so as i mentioned the trend is pretty much down right so we have been consolidating in a downtrend in this range from that 50 cents to that 
55 cents. So that is that five cents range for now. So I think if you are looking to um, take short positions, you can use like CFD. I'm not too sure whether they do uh, have scripts for that, but you can check it out. I think they're looking to take short positions uh, potentially near that 55, 54. I think that's where selling can come back and uh, for a potential breakdown of this 55 cents level. So far, I can see that this 55 cent level is holding, but as I say, in a downtrend, you want to be careful because if you break certain support, like see where we broke this like um, 70 cents, uh, the 60 cent support gave way as well, so to just push down, all right? So same thing, if the 50 cents were to give way, we might eventually hit up to that, you know, that 45 cents to maybe even that, that 40 cents level, that could be like the next downside. So just be careful, right? In the downtrend, we try not to buy. In fact, we want to think about how you can take like short positions if, it, if there are scripts to short in CFD, that's where you can take like short positions to kind of like write the downside even more, all right? So this is Inotech, a little bit more bearish. In fact, not a little bit, I would say more bearish for now. In fact, um, we do have a couple of, uh, for those of you who, have access to my 1GT system. In fact, you can attend one of those free web class that we're still running to learn a bit more on uh, trend in terms of the entry and exit levels, how you can use a system to guide you. All right, so I'll just place the link in the chat. For those of you who are asking about it, you can attend one of those free web class. Let me just go ahead to place the link right here. For those of you who have not attended one of my web class to learn a bit more on like the strategy, how do we know when to get in, when to get out, especially in a, a bear market right now. I mean, previously it was bull, now it's a bit more bearish. You can attend one of those free web class I just placed the link in the chat as well. All right, so you can take a look at it, right? But this is Inotech, right, on this system that I have called One GT. So you can see that you know Inotech was one of those really good uh, up trending stocks. In fact, like 2020, 2021, all right, um, it was a, a green bar right here, very very strong green up trend. Couple of good bullish candles went up, went up, went up. Look at this right here. This was in 10 of March, 2021. All right, and so to see that move from like 65 cents all the way to 90 over cents, and then we got an exit signal, right? So it was still quite okay. I was somewhere around like May, June, looking quite okay. But then, as I say, right, the trend started to turn, all right? And you can see that this green bar eventually turned to red, all right, somewhere around like August, July. And then we had a couple of red arrows down, bearish arrows, bearish signals pointing down uh, as the trend bar started to turn red in color. So a bit of a downtrend, we got red. You know, bearish signal coming out and you can see it started to push down got an exit went up a little bit but then another bearish signal came out went down went down went down so a couple of red bearish signal just coming down since like you know last year august look at this right here this was in april this year as well went down and yeah right now you can see this is where we are seeing a bit of consolidation as i say from that 50 cents to 55 cents and we are seeing like another new bearish signal all right so yeah potential shots can be taken i would say that anything below 55 cents it looks a little bit more bearish so probably would not want to buy. We only want to buy when we see some clear signs of an upwards revolve. So maybe if the, the color of the bar turned to green in color, there's some signs of an uptrend. And if maybe if we to break certain resistance level, like the 55 cents or 60 cents, all this could point to a good revolve. or maybe an uptrend starting to form again. But right now, this all hasn't happened yet. So I would say it's a bit more bearish for now. Does it make sense? All right, so that is for Inotech, right? So that's for Inotech. Let me just go ahead to shift this back, all right? And this is Inotech. I hope I've given you guys a quick uh, rundown of this stock for those of you who are asking about it. Next one will be stock number three. Type three, guys. Type three in the chat if you want to move on to the next stock, which will be like um, Top Glove, right? Top Glove. I think that is a stock that a lot of you are asking about as well. Let's see where we are right now. And is it time to buy or is it where you want to be careful as well? Top Glove, the third stock that I talk about, right? So we have covered like two stocks, guys. Um, we have covered Wilma, we have covered Inotech, and this is stock number three, Top Glove, right? One of those um, glove makers, right? Like uh, Riverstone, UG Healthcare, they were really popular when COVID hit about like 2020. And it was one of those really strong uptrending stocks, but you can see that the tide has turned and we are pretty much pulling down and down and down, right? So we kind of like broke certain support level, you know, not just last year, in fact, in 2020, when it talks about vaccine, the trend started to turn down for, for companies like this, right? So that's where, you definitely want to be careful, right? You definitely don't want to hold on to, to stock like this. Is, this is not like, uh, you know, over the past few months, it has came down. In fact, it has came down for more than a year already, right? Even before uh, 2021, we have been seeing uh, it just coming down, right? I think from, from my system, we also had a couple of, uh, let, let's just see, right? A couple of like bearish signals as well, all right? Yeah, I mean, pretty much, uh, yeah, let me just go ahead to, to show you quickly what it says on the system that I have. So you know, find out a bit more on the system and how it can guide you attend one of those free web class i've just placed the link in the chat you can check it out but yeah this is top you can see that pretty much in a downtrend right it was the trend wise turned somewhere in like 2020 november and yeah and and it's pretty, uh, that, that's where i started to see a few red bearish arrows just coming out 
at each time it rebounds, you got a red arrow pump and started to push down, consolidate another red arrow down and started to push down. I think most recent one, this was in, in 12th of April. Look at this, a red arrow down, bearish signal, pop, 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 went all the way down, another bearish signal, pop, 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 went all the way down. And this is where we are right now, right? So maybe about support at 30 cents, but if that breaks, we might see more selling. So definitely a downtrend for this stock. It's been not just a recent bear, it's been a bear for more than a year already, right? So definitely don't want to fall into stock like this. Instead, you want to think about like maybe taking like short positions to, to write the downside if there are scripts available for shorting. All right, so this is top glove. I would say a little bit more bearish, right? Looking at trend is pretty much in a very firm downtrend. Each time it rebounds up, sellers are back to push it back down. In fact, um, right now, I would say that we are seeing a bit of resistance, maybe about that 35 cents, all right, with support. At that 30 cents, 30 cents would be kind of like a psychological support level. 30 to 35, same things like a 5 cents range. If we break that 30 cents, as I mentioned, that's where you want to be careful. We can potentially hit lower to 25, 20. That could potentially be the downside. So normally in a downtrending counter, as I said, we don't want to just hold on uh, to a stock blindly, right? I mean, just imagine if you have held on for like $2 to 180, 160, 140, and you buy, and then it goes down, you buy some more, and it goes down, you buy some more. That's where you get stuck, right? So... We only want to think about buying when there are clear signs of a reversal, when there are clear signs of the trend turning up. If not, you want to be careful. You want to stay out or you can at least reduce some exposure if you're holding on to it or maybe just get out and think about how you can ride the downside. Does it make sense? All right, so don't just hold blindly for now. So this is definitely not a stock to think about buying for now because a little bit more bearish for now. And uh, I would say a very, very firm downtrend. Anything below 35 or maybe 40 cents, this is a weak stock to hold. All right, so that would be stock number three, top glove. And we'll move on to stock number four, which would be uh, Rex International, right? Rex International. So we have covered, guys, three stocks already. For those of you who have just joined us, welcome to this Facebook live show. All right, Cots, ask me any stocks, right? So some of you have really let me know uh, the stocks already. So we have done a live poll. In fact, let me just go ahead to show you for those of you who have just joined us. This is a live poll that we have done, all right? And... A lot of you have asked on like Top Glove, Rack. So there are a lot of stocks we will cover, but we have covered like Wilma, Inotech, and Top Glove already. The next one will be like Rex International, and then we go to Samudera Shipping. All right, so make sure you stay all the way to the end, guys. If those of you who are still here, make sure you stay all the way to the end, because if you stay all the way to the end, I'm going to share with you one stock at the end as well. One of those, uh, I would say, a little bit bullish stock, all right, amidst the weakness, amidst, amidst the bearishness we have seen markets, this stock looks quite okay. There are some signs of a revolver. In fact, we have covered it um, just last week or last last week. Uh, some of my clients were alerted to it as well. All right. And that's where you can also put it in your watch list for potentially more upside, a little bit more defensive, I would say. Right. So stay all the way to the end of this live show. And that's where I'll review to you this bonus stock at the end. All right. After covering all the stocks that you guys are asking about. All right. So let's go on to stock number four, which will be none other than Rex international right rex international let's take a look at it right now you can see this is rex international all right trading at about 0 0.225 right 0 0.225 so let me just go to draw it for you you can see that rex international has been a little bit more volatile right so we kind of like hit the peak of like 48 cents sold off rebounded to like that 38 and we came back down so a little bit of a head and shoulder pattern all right so this is like the head right here the left shoulder right shoulder and i would say that the key support level would be this 0.25 right so 0.25 I think this was a stock that was asked as well in the previous live uh, facebook live show right 25 cents to 26 cents would be this really critical support level all right and if we do break that 25 cents that's where we could potentially see further weakness and this head and shoulder pattern can actually play out in terms of more selling to come right so it seems like we have broken this 25 cents support level in fact we can also draw this upward sloping channel support line, right? That has been connecting the lows since 2020 March, right? About like two years, we have rebounded many times above these channel supports. You can see right now, we have um, broken two things, right? First thing is the 25 cents support level that we have rebounded a couple of times. One, let me just put this in green in color. One, two, all right, three, all right. And now you can see that we come broke down here, right? So this is where we have broken that 25 cents support level and the horizontal support level. Yeah, so it was like the resistance, you can see right here, a bit of a resistance here, and we come broke it as well, right? So that was the first thing, right? The next thing would be that we have broken this channel support line that I talk about right here. So look at this, as you extend this line, you can see we have broken this upward sloping channel support, right? So a little bit more weak, I would say, uh, in terms of the, the 
the trend it might potentially turn down anything below 0.25 as i say uh you know it's not so good right in fact if you actually held above that 0.25 we see a few good like bullish reversal candles right here we might start to see this consolidation happen right right here from 25 all the way to that 20 cents but you can see as we approach at 25 cents yeah you know, sellers started to come back we like just touch it for like one or two days and then we just broke down at 25 and you know this rebound didn't actually happen and of course this 20 days moving average you can see it's still sloping down for now prices below the 20 days so a little bit more weak for now i would say rex international it's a bit of a i would say some selling is still happening all right and anything below 25 unfortunately there could be more selling all the way to like 20 cents all right that could be like the next support psychological support level all right so why are we seeing weakness in many of those oil stocks right so i think some of you are asking about oil stocks like geo energy and all that so we are seeing weakness in the oil and gas the energy stocks because we have seen oil prices come like you know tanking down as well from like about 120 110 over the past one two weeks we have gone below the 100 dollars. i think now it's like about 94 95 dollars. so back to pretty much that uh low that you've seen in uh since like last i would say yeah since probably in february for the past like four months we have come back to that the 95 for brand truth oil wti futures about that 95 92 dollars kind of level support levels we're back to that level right and the reason we're seeing weakness in oil prices was because um all this while I mean, when the russian ukraine war happened uh there were like supply chain issue there were like sanctions that will be done on russia and you know we saw a spike in oil prices due to like supply being limited right so that's a good thing right that's the oil prices going up but over the past like one month plus right we have kind of like shifted away from this whole supply side issue to a bit of a demand side issue why because as i say right now uh, because of rate hikes and all that there are talks about a recession so when i talk about a recession basically affect demand uh people will probably stay at home more uh less oil consumption will be used demand drops unemployment goes up and affects the whole economy and the demand goes down so when the demand goes down that's where oil might not be that much of the demand uh, i mean like people might not need too much oil so demand is affected all right and when that happens that's where we saw us selling down in oil all right and oil price started to push down with that recession fears actually coming back kind of like affecting many of those companies right here like rex as well all right so that's the reason why we saw also i think right now a little bit more weakness uh anything below 25 cents we are seeing weakness and in fact let's just take a look at what it says on the system that I have. So once in a while, I'll just pull out the system that I have. If I don't want to think so much, if you see like a bearish signal, that's where you want to be careful. So I think for Rex, we had a couple of good bullish signals. I would say since like September last year, we got this good one, 20 cents, and went up to like about 35. Got a bearish one came down and then started to push up a new bearish bullish signals. All right, but I think somewhere around like April, May, that's where the bar has started to turn down. You can see red in color. And the most recent uh bearish signal right here so this was on like the 15th of june you see this is like a bearish signal right here we got 15th of june and you can see prices have started to just peak lower all right and we, we broke that 30 cents it just went down 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 so this bearish signal uh red bar i mean the, the trend bar is still red in color pretty much downtrend of course uh red bar is still here there is no exits yet on this red bar so unfortunately that is where we could potentially see more selling until we probably see like an exit or maybe like a new green arrow a bullish arrow up then yes we might probably see some buying pressure coming back but right now you can see that as i'm talking right now uh there are no exits on this red arrow that on this beverage signal that came out on the 15th of june right just about yeah just last month all right so that's rex international all right okay so you have a system kind of like kind of help you be a bit less emotional all right you don't, if you see a bearish signal probably you want to get out first don't just hold it all the way down uh probably just get out all right and yeah, it takes away the emotion of just hoping and holding on to it. Uh, if you see a bearish signal, it's a bit more bearish. Just get out, all right? Get out, cut loss, all right? You need to, all right? Or have a plan as well if to, to reduce some exposure rather than just holding it down, 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 all right? Okay, Ken? So that would be Rex International, all right? So those of you who have just joined us, guys, welcome to this Facebook Live show called Ask Me Any Stocks. We have covered like four stocks already, Wilma, Inotech, Top Glove, and Rex International, all right? So um, I appreciate guys if you can kind of like give me a like and share as well for those of you who are still here. I think we have like close to uh, 200 of you here already, right? Just help me to hit the like and share button and also smash the notification button. Go to overview, smash the notification button. All right, so that 
you will not miss out whenever we go live as well all right so smash the notification button go to overview or you can go to live chat and that's where you can like send me all the hearts right so thank you so much i hope you have some, found some value so far on the four stocks that we talk about you learned a little bit on the strategy you've seen what it says on my system as well just to give you a bit of an idea for those of you who are new we have not seen you before i hope that kind of like gives you an idea in terms of the strategy the whole thought process as well all right okay good so let's move on to the next one which would be samu there are shipping, all right? Some of are shipping, all right? Um, yeah, some of shipping is one of those good stocks, up trending stocks in the shipping sector. One of those, I would say, defensive stocks. And I've covered this stock I think, a few months back as well. You can see that the trend is pretty much up for now, all right? Pretty much up for now in the longer term. Why? Look, look at this right here. This red line is the 100 days moving average, all right? And um, the red line above the blue line, obviously, and of course, prices above both of this line, all right? And in fact, right now, you can see that this red line offers a little bit of a support. This is the 100 days moving average. It offers a little bit of support. And as prices were to, like you can see right here, when it nears the 100 days moving average, we kind of like push away from it and start to, to, to kind of like you know, push up quite fast, right? So same thing here. We are kind of like nearing the 100 days moving average over the past one or two weeks. And it seems like we're kind of like pushing away from it, right? So that's a good thing, right? But what about the near-term resistance level? I think that this resistance level would be about that 85 cents level let me just see i think maybe about 85 cents level would be a bit of a resistance level you can see that we kind of like touch it here that was somewhere in um june just last month we kind of like you know attempted to break that 85 cents but the next day we sold off and we came all the way back down again to that 73 to 75 level so that could be where we might see some selling all right take note around that 85 86 level i think that's where some selling can happen, all right? We want to like, you know, break that level and, and stay above at least over the next one, two days because uh, as I said previously, we went up and then the next day we just kind of like came back down again. So it shows that sellers are pretty much defending that level, right? But overall, I, overall, I think this stock looks quite good. In fact, it's one of those uh, strong uptrending stocks, all right? It's one of those strong uptrending stocks that whose uptrend looks pretty intact, all right? Uptrend looks pretty intact. And I think if we can, like, you know, as I say, stay above that 85 cents, potentially we might see more upside to the next target all the way to that 90, 95 cents. I think that could be like the next upside target. Previously, this 95 cents was that resistance level and we can potentially hit there as well. All right. So, yeah, I think that that is a quite a good stock, quite a good stock. In fact, we kind of like covered it to a kind of alert clients to it about one or two weeks back as well in the WhatsApp. So for those of you who are my clients, we have like got in near here. I think we, we talk about this support being about at 73 to 75 cents right here. That was where we are seeing a little bit of the support get this right rebounded, came down, rebounded. So a couple of times whereby we rebounded from this 73 to 75 cents. So as it near support levels like this in and out trend, that is actually where long positions can be taken. So that was pretty much the upside. So we've kind of like hit our target at 85 cents. If you want to take some profit, it's, it's fine as well. Nothing wrong to take some profit. Uh, you can take partial profit. You can leave some in case it breaks at 85 to push higher. That is perfectly fine as well, but make sure you plan to uh, protect your profits, right? You don't want prices to come all the way back down to like 75 uh, and, and you're back to square one, right? So make sure you protect your profits if you are already making money, if you have already got in near this like 73 to 75 level that we can like talk about for those of my clients who actually went in uh, when, when you got the alert by WhatsApp. All right, for those of you who are not my clients, uh, if you're not already my client, uh, you definitely want to be in. I mean, if you are kind of like trading on your own without much support, you're just trading online on some online broker. You do have a uh, you do have a broker. You're just logging online. Uh, you can come over as a client of mine, and this is where you can get some of my ideas much faster as well. All right, uh, by WhatsApp daily, we do share some updates as well, some trainings. You get some of my more exclusive training as well. So yeah, go ahead to come over as a client. I'll just place the link in the chat as well for those of you who are not yet a client. All right, for those of you who are my client. Let me know, guys. How, let me know how many of you are actually my client in Philip Securities when I'm a broker. Just type yes, type yes in the chat if you are a client of mine in Philip Securities. You have a trading account with me. Thank you so much for the support. I really appreciate it. Uh, let me know if you are come like already a client of mine, all right? And, and you're actually receiving those WhatsApp, uh, you know, ideas that we come like share daily, all right? Let me know. Yes, yes, yes. I think so. most of you are my clients, all right? So thank you so much for those of you who are not my clients. As I say, right? If you're just trading on your own, you got no service. Nobody to talk to, you know, no ideas, no training, no idea who your broker even is. You're just calling a hotline. You wait like five minutes for, for somebody to pick up the phone. I think you need to do something about it, right? So just click on the link there, right? Come on board as a client of mine in Philip Securities, whereby I will speak with you personally, right? Once the account is ready and you do at least get some service at least, right? Some of our top ideas, um, some stocks can watch lists 
uh, and you can put it in your watch list. So that is the link to come over as a client if you are not yet a client. Right? So that is Samudera shipping, right? That is Samudera shipping. So very quickly, uh, yeah, I mean, since we're talking, looking at the system, very quickly you can see that Samudera shipping is one of those pretty good art training stocks. As I mentioned, right, the bar is green in color. We have this um, green upward stopping, a couple of bullish signal, right? You can see 9 of Feb 2022, you got this bullish signal. And when it was like 40, 40, what, 45 cents, all right? 45 cents went up, got to exit. Another bullish signal pop went up, got to exit. And oh yeah, we got this bearish signal that came out as a sort of a little bit, you can see sort of. But then another bullish signal came back, went up again. And yeah, I think this is the most recent one on the 27th of June. This is about uh, two weeks back, three weeks back. Got this bullish signal right here. Trend by is green in color, obviously. It's like, say it's an uptrend. So we've got this bullish signal. And yeah, so far there, there are no exits as you can see right here, right? So I think it looks quite okay. I think if we can break the 85 cents, potentially 90, 95 could be the next upside target. All right, so that is uh, some of our shipping. All right, so we have pretty much covered, guys. One, two, three, four, five, five stocks. Bilma. I know tech, Top Glove, Rex International, and Samudera Shipping. So the next stop would be none other than Chip Inc. Chip Inc. Sing, right? I think Chip Inc. Sing, a lot of you, more than 20 of you are asking about this stock called Chip Inc. Sing as well. Let's take a look at it, right? I think Chip Inc. Sing was one of those stocks that I actually shared in my previous uh, Facebook Live show as well. I think that was on the 30th of June, right? 30th of June. Did any of you attended? Any of you actually attended the previous live show just about two weeks back? Uh, let me know. Let me know if you have actually seen this talk before in the previous live show about two weeks back. Let me know. Yes, yes. So yeah, I think I've kind of like covered this. Uh, you know, you, you can go to go to my Facebook page, um, Joey Choi, and uh, yeah, I think I kind of like gave this uh, bonus stock if I can remember, gave this bonus stock on the thirtieth of June at, at the end as well. All right, uh, on Chipping Sing, right? So those of you that attended that previous live show about two weeks back, Facebook live show, congrats! If you kind of like got in, it seems like we have pushed up a little bit now. It's about zero point five nine five. So I think that was about two weeks back. It was somewhere around that. Uh, where was it? I think maybe around that 54, 53 level. All right. So it seems like we've kind of like pushed up a little bit. So at that point in time, I covered it about two weeks back. I talked about this level. All right. This was that resistance level. The reason why it came to my watch list was because we broke this resistance level about at 52, 53 level that we have actually been consolidating below since 2020. You can see this pushing up, down, up, down, up, down. And we broke that 52 level or maybe that 50 cent psychological level as well. That's where potentially we could see some upside, right? especially if there are some signs of the trend turning up. Look at the moving averages. This green line, 20 days moving average is pointing up, of course, price above it. So it looks quite good in the short term as well. So there were some upside targets that were drawn. Uh, it was a bonus stock that was reviewed at the end. All right. And I think upside target was about 60 cents. So it seems like we have kind of like neared, maybe even hit. I think today the high was at 60 cents. So yeah, so you have to kind of like hit our upside target at 60 cents. So you've like taken profit, got out, you make four, five, six cents, perfectly fine. All right, nothing wrong to take some profit. All right, but what you want to do is protect your profits. Um, but right now, I would say that uh, could there actually be more upside? Uh, yes, there could be. All right, right now we are actually seeing some selling. I mean, there could be potentially some selling near that 60 cents because 60 cents is a psychological level as well. Made money today. Thank you very much. Oh, Grace, you made, made money. Thank you very much, Joey. Awesome, awesome. I get glad that you make some money. All right. <laughs> okay, good. So, yeah. So, 60 cents, as I mentioned, it would be this um, selling area, selling zone. Why? Look, look at this, right? So, this was pretty much where we were in um, 2020, a little bit of a support then. And that is that, that level whereby we kind of like, you know, approach it. We sold off. It was like the support. We broke down a bit of resistance here and we're back to this level. So, anything near 60 cents, I think we can actually see a bit of selling. We might just consolidate from that, you know, maybe 56 or 57 to 60 cents a while. And if we break that 60 cents, then good. That, that's where you know, upside targets can be revised higher to maybe even that 65 cents, right? So I think what you want to do is that you already got in here at maybe 53 or 54. You attended the previous live show. Congrats, you are making money. So you want to take steps to protect your profits, whether or not it goes up further or not, but you take steps to protect your profits. You can have a stop loss maybe just below 58. All right, or just below the low of uh, like, for example, today it kind of like close uh, at about 595. So the low is about 575. So I think just, if you want to just protect it a bit, you could set, set 
like a stop loss just below that 575 and maybe below 57 just to protect it a bit in case it would come all the way back down all right that's what you could do or you can also lock in some profits near 59 50, 59 half i think that's fine as well and you can leave like some just to, to write in case it breaks the 60 cents uh to even push higher as well all right so yeah i think it looks quite okay in fact i think from the system that i have let me just see what it says, right? So I think this was the stock that came to watch this. Uh, a green bar, all right? We had this bullish signal that came in in 24th of May. It's about, I would say, two months back. It started to push up from like 43 all the way to like 56, as I mentioned. Got to exit. But recently, it seems like we've got a new bullish signal that just came out on the uh, 12th of July, which is like, yeah, I mean, just two days back on Tuesday, right? Because, uh, yeah, we've got this green arrow pointing up some it's a new bullish signal. I mean, we've got an exit and we've got a new bullish signal. And today started to push up a little bit more. So yeah, I think we'll see, right? I mean, if it breaks at 60 cents, I think this bullish signal will continue to play out and it might start to push up up and then we'll see when it gets an exit again. Uh, that's where you can get us to probably just get out and, and lock in some profits. I think it's perfectly fine as well. All right, so that would be uh, Chipping Sing. One of those good stocks, I think one of those like more uh, stronger stocks to have right now amidst a bearish market. All right, so that would be Chip and sink, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six. We have covered pretty much six stocks already. And uh, let's go on to the seventh stock, right? So how many of you want to go on to the seventh stock, which would be like DBS, all right? DBS. Let me know. Just type stock number seven, type seven in the chat, right? Type seven in the chat. You want to move on to the next stock, right? So we try to have more time, guys. I'll try to cover as many. It's like about an hour already, right? So uh, we have more time. We try to cover more stocks as well for those of you who have just joined us we have covered like already six stocks wilma i know tech top glove rex international samudara shipping and chip Eng sing so i hope that those of you who are asking about stock you you kind of like take a note of what i've shared already all right i'll try to have a bit more time to cover more stocks all right if you have more time maybe about 20 minutes more all right but good that you guys are still here all right All right, so seven seven. Hi, uh, we have a few of you coming aboard. A few names I've not seen before. Good to see you here. Hi, Esther, uh, Benny, Desmond, Teo. Good to see you here as well. Ellen, uh, yeah, seeing you many times. Thank you for being here as well. Michelle, Jimmy, awesome. All right, so I can see your comments, guys. So keep it coming. All right, keep it coming so I can put your comments right here, and everybody will be able to see uh, your comments as well on the screen. All right, so let's move on to the the next stock. I think that would be the bank. Right, so DBS is one of the banks that. Uh, many of you are asking about so let's take a look at it right now all right so this is dbs what do you guys think about dbs before i dive into the chart is it a little bit more bearish for now or a bit more more bullish for for dbs let me know in the chat what, what are your thoughts Okay, so James, you're saying that it's a bit more um, bearish for, for DBS, right? So this is DBS. Uh, I wish a bit more bearish as well. Yeah, I think definitely there's some signs of weakness we have seen as well, right? So very good. So a bit more bearish, bearish. Thank, thank you so much, guys, for kind of like uh, Adeline is saying it's, it's bearish as well, right? So let's go ahead and explore it, all right, and see why we are, in fact, uh, a little bit more bearish, right? So you can see that I talked about these banks. I think I did a video on, on um, YouTube as well. You can check it out, uh, talking about the banks. And uh, there was definitely some signs of weakness since like two three months back somewhere around like march april we can see that we broke some of the support level like the 33 let me just draw it for you you can see this was where we kind of rebounded and we, we broke this 33 and started to push down rebounded a bit went down and now we are like back to some consolidation i would say all right so we have found a little bit of a support right so let me just share with you this support which i think is quite important if we want to stamp more downside right for this entire dps bank all right, so I would say that this level is very critical, all right, and it's none other than the $29 to that $29.50, right? So look, look at this. We're pretty much back to where we were, um, you know, last year, 2021. You can see that we saw a couple of rebounds from here, all right? As we approach that 29 to 29.50, you can see a couple of good bullish candle, long, lower shadow, rebounded, rebounded. Let me just put this in green in color right here. All right, so green color as well. So a couple of supports at about 29 to 29.50. And in fact, over the past like two weeks, right, two to three weeks, we started to see some bargain hunting coming back 
just about that 29.50 as well, right? Just about that 29.50, you can see about one or two or three times we neared 29.50 and buyers started to come back up. So in the longer term, right, there are some signs of weakness in terms of the trend turning down, right? Why do I say that? Look, look at this right here, right? This, um, this I mean, we, we can't broke that 33. That's the first thing. Second thing is that this rate line, this 100 days moving average, you can see right here as we, as we are kind of like playing out over the past week, we have actually gone below the 200 days moving average. Does it make sense, right? You've kind of like gone below the 200 days moving average. So definitely when that happens, that could be actually be a sign of the trend starting to turn down in the mid to long term, right? So it doesn't look that good in the long term. I think if you were to stay below a certain level, like maybe that 31 or that 32, uh, potentially this might push down and down, the, the blue line will start to point down as well. And we might be in a firmal downtrend just starting to play out, right? So all this while you can see that this red line so now the red line has gone below the blue line right red 100 days moving average below the blue line 200 days moving average but both have not really point down yet in fact the blue line is like flat all right it's not down i mean the red cross below correct but the blue line has not point down yet but if the blue line starts to point down then i would say that that is where we might have a formal downtrend all right in fact we, we might actually see the trend turning down right look, look at this right so this red line and blue line you see all this wow, I mean, this was like COVID, right? 2020 talks about vaccine. Many of the markets rebounded and we, we got this really good rally when the 100 days moving average line, look at this right here. So 100 days moving average line, red line went above the blue line, both started to point up and you see all this while the red above the blue, both pointing up. And right now, over the past week, this red line has finally crossed below the blue, all right? But the blue has not pointed out yet. Like the blue point out, then we might in a, be a bit of a downtrend. So a bit more bearish, I would say, right? So if you're looking to buy, I mean, if you're going for the like longer term, I know some of you are like value investor, you want to buy on deeps, you want to, you know, it's still DBS bank, right? So it doesn't matter, right? You just want to buy on cheaper because you have gotten in at 35 or 36 or 37, and now it's much cheaper. You want to like lower down your cost price. I think that's fine, but just take note that, you know, if we break certain support level, we could actually see more um, weakness. So you don't want to like just whack and then, you know, just show hand and get in all your bullets and you don't have anything left. I mean, even though you're going for a long term, it's good to just be a bit more cautious, a bit more nimble. You only want to get in if it hits certain support levels. Like right now, as I say, these 29 to 29.50 are where some support is happening all the way up to maybe around that $31. I think a little bit of resistance at about 31. I'm just going to draw this line for you, all right? So this would be that... $31, or I can see, yeah, potentially a bit of resistance. You can see we kind of like near it and we sold all it was like maybe about 30, 50, but I think $31 would be uh, like the resistance. You can see it's a bit of a, a support then, right? Support now that is like that resistance level, right? So the range could be quite wide. Anything from 29 to $31, that is potentially that, you know, that range, 29 to that $31. So like about that, you know, $2 range we might consolidate here. All right, my consolidate here, you can see that. So, so longer term, mid to long term trend is a bit more weak, right? But short term, right? Look at the short term trend. So, short term trend would be like the next like one month, next few weeks. We are actually not that weak. We are actually a bit of a sideways movement. Why? All right, look, look at this green line. So, this green line, let's say, this green line is the 20 days moving average. So, when we broke that $33 right here, it was in April, right? We broke the 33. You can see this green line was just sloping down like nobody business, just pointing down, 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 because prices below it, right? But right now, look at this green line. Let me just zoom in for you, right? This green line, can, can you see this green line? This 20 days moving average. It was like stopping down, as I say, right? Down, down, down. But right now, this green line, it's not really sloping down. But does it make sense? I mean, it's like flat. It's like just moving sideways. Does, does it make sense, right? It's like moving sideways. So it can show that in the short term, we have found what we call a little bit of a sideways consolidation, a bit of a support coming back um, near that 29 to 29.50, as I mentioned, all right, and that could be like that short-term consolidation, 29 all the way to that $31. So if you're looking to trade the range, right, for a short-term $2 up, down, you know, get in 29 plus and, and get out near 31, uh, that, that could be like a short-term $2 range. Does it make sense? So that, that would be the short-term, all right? If you're looking, looking for the longer term, you can as well, but just be careful to say if we break certain support, we can even hit lower. If you go below 29, unfortunately, that's where the trend can actually point out even more, we might see more sound like, right? So that would be for DBS, right? So let's take a look at the next one would be like Geo Energy, right? Just one more stock, this will be stock number eight. Let's take a look at Geo Energy. So Geo Energy, same thing like uh, Rex International as well. We have been seeing selling, I would say, uh, in the energy place as well, right? With oil prices coming down, same thing. 
Geo Energy got hit, Rex Energy got hit as well. We broke certain support level. Like, look at this. This was the support level that I talk about in some of the videos that I've done, about at 43, 44, right? So this was like a bit of a resistance here. We broke up, all right? So it became like a support and we kind of uh, rebounded from it. You can see went down, rebounded from it right here. And unfortunately, right here, we, we kind of like broke down that 43 to 44 level. So not a good thing. In fact, that was where we had some um, you know downside targets that were drawn all the way back to that 30, Five cents level. So this thirty-five cents level would be really important. This is right down. I think for Joe Energy, we are back to that thirty-five cents level that was holding really well. You can see this is like that level whereby it was a firm resistance level in January, you know, February, right? Uh, somewhere around January, February, right? A very firm resistance. And when we broke this thirty-five, went all the way up, came down, went up to a pick of sixty and started to sell down. All right. So we are back to this thirty-five cents level, which I think is quite key. In fact. If we were to break that 35 cents, like for Rex International, right? We broke that 25 cents, right? We broke the 25 cents and some selling actually came back quite fast. You know, the sellers just started to rush in and started to see more selling pressure, right? And buyers just gave way, right? But right now you can see that this 35 is where we have been holding for the past three weeks. In fact, we saw a couple of bullish candle right here, but I'm not too sure whether we can hold, to be honest, because this green line, as I say, this green line, the 20 days moving average is obviously it's still stopping down right now and prices is still below this green line. So in the short term, if you ask me, all right, whether this stock is a bit more weak or more bullish, I would say in the short term, we are actually more weak, more bearish, more weak. I mean, not so good, all right? And there could be a potential whereby it might break that 35 cent because as I say, short term, the green line is pointing down, all right? It's still stopping down right now as I'm talking and prices are still below this green line, even though we are back at that 35 cent support. So just be careful, right? Just be careful. If that 35 cents were to break down, unfortunately, we can see more selling all the way to that 30, 30 cents. I think that could be like the downside and it could be quite fast. I think it could be quite fast if we break at 35 cents. I think sellers might just come back, you know, it might trigger a few short orders as well. All right. I mean, short positions can be taken as well. For those of you who are a bit more aggressive, right, to write the downside, short positions can be taken to write it all the way to that 30 cents level. I think that could be like the next support level. So just be careful, right? Just be careful. You're looking to buy at like 35, 36, just you want to catch a rebound. Have a plan, have a plan to stop loss because as I say right now, even though we have been holding for the past two weeks, but there's no guarantee, all right? We could actually still break that 35 cents. And if we do, I think the selling can actually continue further. All right, so that would be um, geo energy resources, right? Just be a bit more careful, right? Right now, the range is 35, to that 40 cents that is the short term range so yeah if we can consolidate here as i say right we can just consolidate a little bit more we see that green line just flattening out all right and prices just staying above that 35 still as you consolidate from 35 to 40 that would be a good thing but i think for any firm reversal now i think uh, we definitely want to get past this like 40 cents i think we can get past that 40 cents then that would be a better reversal confirmation all right and of course if that happens i think this green line will start to slope up prices going above it all this would point to a good reversal which is not what we are seeing right now right right now as i say the green line is still stopping down and prices are kind of like below it so there is a potential that the 35 might break all right so if you guys are still here and you can see you can still see and you can hear me and you're following me so far type yes type yes in the chat if you are still following me and what i've mentioned so far kind of like makes sense to you and uh yeah you kind of like get get my point all right type yes in the chat all right so we've covered like eight stocks already guys we've covered like eight stocks already we have like Vilma, inotech top glove rex international samudera shipping shipping sink dbs and finally geo energy right so yes 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 thank you so much guys i hope that you have found a little bit of opinion i've given you my take on the stocks that you guys are asking about so you have kind of like a better idea of where we are hating some of the key levels the support and resistance that you want to take note of right so uh, have a plan right don't just hold blindly you know hoping that you will recover when there are in fact signs of weakness right in fact i mean since i mean since we are talking about the uh, yeah, joe energy in fact let me just go ahead to uh pull out i think let's just say I think for joe energy we actually did had a couple of um let's just see right so uh, this is joe energy right so this is joe energy on my i mean since we're talking about joe energy i thought why not just show you guys the this this what it says on my system so joe energy actually was one of those really good uptrending um you know oil and energy plays even before the whole russian ukraine war in fact last year you can see that couple of good bullish signal this was in second september 
2021, we went up for the exit. It was like a really good move, right? And a couple of, you can see the bar was pretty much green in color, right? So quite a good bullish signal, green arrow up, green arrow up. This was in January, 20 Jan, 2022. Look at this right here. We went from like 30 cents to that 45 for the exit and uh, where we are right now. So yeah, I think recently, right? Look at this right here. So on this date, on the 12th of May, unfortunately, right? So it was like green arrow up all this while, but in May, 12th of May, we had this first red arrow down, right? This first red arrow down, uh, pointing down. So that's where there are, whoa, some signs of weakness starting to come back. Or you kind of like broke some of the support level, like I mentioned, the 44, 43 support level. So I think when this kind of like, this red signal came out, you see started to push down, down, down from like 48, down, 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 all the way to like 30, 30, 30 38, all right? And then we got an exit. But I think most recently, as I say, this, we got this new bearish signal that just came out, right? Of course, this bar has started to turn from green to red in color. As I mentioned, the trend has started to turn down. And we got this red bar, this red bearish signal, all right? That is like just came out on when uh, 5th of July, right? 5th of July, which is like last uh, last Tuesday, right? So yeah, so as I said, you want to be careful, right? So yeah, I mean, if we see an exit from this red bar, then it's fine. But because of this red bar, because the trend is a bit more down, and if we break that 35 cents, that's where you want to be careful, right? Probably send an alert to get out of stop loss, right? If you're holding on to it, maybe even think about riding downside if that 35 cents were to break down as well. All right, so that would be geo energy. I mean, just wanted to show you guys since we have talked about it, right? Okay, so yes, yes, yes. All right, so yeah, I think we have pretty much covered uh, most of the stocks already. So there's another five more minutes. In fact, let me just go ahead to uh, look at one more stock, all right, before I share with you guys uh, one stock that you guys can uh, put in your watch list as well. So let me just go ahead to take a look and let's see what is another stock that you guys are asking about. I think we have like another one which should be, uh, where, where is Okay, I think OCBC, right? OCBC, let me take a look at it. I think OCBC is the bank that quite a lot of people are asking me about as well, right? So I think OCBC compared to DBS, so very quickly for OCBC, you can see that, and let me just wait to write it now. So we have a uh, Joe Energy and it's going to be OCBC before I share with you guys one stock that you can put in your watch list, right? So make sure you stay all the way uh, to the end as well, right? So make sure you stay all the way to the end, all right? And as well. Okay, good. So let me go ahead to see. And so this is OCBC about eleven dollars and twenty five cents, right? Eleven dollars and twenty five cents. And uh, what what do you guys think? A little bit more bearish, I would say, right? Something like DBS, but you can see that for DBS, we kind of like sold off to that, you know, support already. For OCBC, we have sold off as well, but we have not sold off that much. I mean, compared to DBS, right? You can see that we are like slowly inching lower, but we broke some of those like key support, like the eleven fifty, all right. And now we're like eleven twenty five. So that level that you want to take note of would be this. $11. I think $11 is a key level. You can see that we have been holding above it since like 2021. All right, for one and a half years, we've been holding above it. So I think we hit to that $11. That's where some bargain hunting might come back again. All right. Uh, but the thing here is that in the short term, uh, in fact, in the mid to long term as well, you can see that the moving average is starting to turn down. All right. Same thing like DBS, the red line, 100 days moving average has crossed down below the blue line. So there are definitely some signs of weakness in the um, longer term as well, right? And that's where you want to be um, careful, all right? Okay, good. So let me go ahead to just, um, yeah. So this is this is OCBC, OCBC right here. So a little bit more bearish, I would say. Anything below the 11.50, that's where you want to be careful. That's where we could actually see uh, more weakness in the short term, all the way to $11, back consolidate from 11 to 11.50. That would be the range. I think if we do get above that, like, 11.50, let me just go ahead to show you what I mean. But if we do like consolidate here up and down, all right. So we're going to see a bit of consolidation, a bit of the support holding a couple of times, touch about one or two times, what we call like a double bottom or maybe a triple bottom. And we get up above a certain resistance, a consolidation resistance, then that could be a good sign of a bottom being found, right? But yeah, I think that is the range right now from 11 to 11.50. That would be the range for OCBC. For those of you who are asking, a little bit more weak for now. We might see a bit more short-term selling back to $11. Hopefully, that's where some bargain hunting can actually come back again. All right, okay, good. So we have pretty much covered um nine stocks, right? So Wilma, Inotech, Top Glove, Rex International, Samudera Shipping, Chipping Singh, DBS, Geo Energy, and finally, OCBC. All right. Okay. So guys, how many of you want to know that a uh, one stock that uh, I'll like share with you so you can put it in your watch list as well. In fact, I've shared with clients as well. Um, just type, type bonus, type bonus 
in the chat and let me know type bonus in the chat if you want to know uh, what is that one stock in my watch list that you can also put in your watch list uh, to watch as well over the next few days or maybe over the next few weeks. All right, so we have more than 200 of you on board already. Thank you so much, guys, for still being here. All right, let me know. Type bonus in the chat if you want to know that stock that uh, yeah you want me to share with you, all right? Type bonus. I only have like more than 30 of you typing bonus, right, before I will share with you this stock. All right, so we have uh, Alfred, uh, bonus, bonus. Thank you, Rachel. Good to see you here. Vivian, bonus. Awesome. Okay. Uh, hi, Bernard, bonus, bonus. Grace, bonus. I think yeah, you're asking about it as well, right? Bonus, bonus, bonus. James, awesome. Okay, so a lot of bonus, right? So give me some love and hearts as well, all right? I would really appreciate if you're here as well. And just give me some like, all right? Some like, share as well, all right? That would be really helpful, all right? So I can see a lot of hearts and share. Thank you so much for those of you who are here and doing that, all right? Thank you so much. And yeah, for those of you who are new to this Facebook Live show that we try to do like once or maybe twice a month, make sure you hit the bell icon right here go to overview if you're on your handphone right here overview you can see there's a, like a live chat there's an overview um go on to look at this like a uh, bell icon right here a bell notification you can click on it set to live notification so that you when we go live um you will also be alerted as well all right okay so bonus bonus i see a lot of bonuses thank you so much right so let me just go ahead to share with you that one stock that you can also put in your watch list whereby i think that we have been seeing strength as well. We might actually see a bit more strength in the coming weeks as well. All right, so let me take a look at this stock. I think this stock was one of those stocks that I've shared with my clients as well. All right, so let me go to um, share this stock right here. So this stock is none other than Sheng Xiong, right? Sheng Xiong. All of you know Sheng Xiong. I mean, how, how many of you actually bought like some uh, groceries on, I mean, in Sheng Xiong before? Let, let me know. Type yes in the chat if you have like actually been to Sheng Xiong before and, you know, bought some service let me know type yes in the chat if you have done it before in singapore all right i'm not too sure whether shing chong is overseas or not but uh in singapore if you've like gone to some shing chong store type yes <clears throat> okay a couple of yeses yes 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 so i mean i've been to shing chong as well all right and I see Xingqiong as one that's a bit like more budget, more uh, lower cost. So you can like kind of like save a bit of money if you go to Xingqiong. Things are a little bit cheaper, all right, compared to like the the, the some other more premium kind of like uh, you know grocery stores, right? So yeah, Xingqiong. I think most of you would have heard of it if you're in Singapore, all right. Uh, Jessica only bought the shares, so I've not not been to Xingqiong before. <laughs> okay, good, good to know, all right. Okay, so this is Xingqiong, right? So yeah, I think Xingqiong is one of those that have been performing quite well. We have been in fact holding quite well despite the weakness they have seen in the market since like the beginning of the year we have the banks the tech stocks the blue chips uh kind of like um you know selling down as well oh thanks Lynette. you're saying that your stop is quite good thanks for your advice awesome thank you so much i'm glad that you kind of like benefited from it and found some value as well also thanks Lynette. all right so yeah since is one of those that's been quite defensive right whereby you know when we saw weakness in the, the banks the, the tech stocks right and now we've talked about recession uh, many stocks come like sort of but sing chong has found a little bit of a bottom we have found some stability and in fact right now there are some signs of the trend kind of turning up as well i think the reason it would be like you know in, in a, like a bear market most people like will eat in or maybe in a recession people like save money you don't know, cook in uh, i mean cook at home you probably buy more groceries and that could be a good thing for Xingqiong as well. Just like when COVID hit, you can see there was a really good um, move, right? Right here after we had COVID and it'd be like circuit breaker and all that. And Xingqiong business come like boom, right? It went from like what, like $1 to like $170, 180 in a couple of like months, right? And it started to, uh, you know, kind of like consolidate a bit lower. All right, as this whole COVID situation started to stabilize. Well, right now you can see that, yeah, we are back to this range right so in fact i can draw this upward sloping let me just go to draw it for you all right um we can draw this upward sloping channel support line so we have found a little bit of a support since like last year october and forming what we call higher low so we can draw this upward sloping channel support line right you can see as it moves and consolidate it is like forming higher lows all right and we will actually cap below this resistance level right so it was like forming higher lows which is a good thing but then you know we were actually kept below this resistance level that you know i kind of like talk about which would be that one five five right so one five five was actually a really firm resistance that we've been trading below since august almost a year we have been below that you know one five five right so it's like forming higher lows consolidating all right which is good at consolidate upwards 
like cap below the 155, but eventually you can see that over the past one week, all right? So I think clients were alerted to it as well. I kind of like sent out a note to my clients, all right? And uh, yeah, it kind of broke that 155. I think it went to like 157 or something and then we were alerted to it, all right? And that's where um, targets were drawn all the way to like 160 to maybe 165. So let me just go to draw like a target for you. I think right now, upside targets can be all the way to maybe that 170, all right? So I think we, we I mean, yeah, one, one, 160 was like the first target, but we have hit it. But I think right now we can revise our targets higher. I think anything above that 160 potentially, we might hit up slowly to like 165 to maybe around that 170. I think that could be like the upside target to around that 170, all right? So you might be asking me why 170, right? Um, Yeah, because 170 is this resistance level. And normally if you look at the past prices, you can see that where selling have actually came out previously as well. And you see that 170, uh, somewhere in like um, 2020 October, that was where we saw a couple of selling right here for like two months, you know, it kind of like just touch, touch, touch and came down. All right, we neared it once, came back down. We, we neared around here, came back down. So yeah, we might be approaching that 165 to 170 again, whereby some selling or some profit taking can actually come back again, right? But the reason why I like it is that because over the past one, two weeks, we managed, as I say, we managed to break this this level all right and this this level would be that 155 or 155 uh resistance level we've been trading below for more than six months and eventually we kind of went above so that's a good sign of some strength coming back of course in the volume as well all right there's some signs of some volume coming back as well all right for for Shinshaw, more than two or three times volume as well all right so it looks quite good it looks quite good a little more defensive as they i think probably because of the bear market or recession fears uh, companies like this will start to benefit as well and this way we're seeing some strength coming back all right so that is Sheng Xiong, right? The bonus stock that I share with you. For those of you who have already got in, you're my client. Uh, congratulations, you're probably making some money. For those of you who are not yet, you want to get it a bit faster, all right? As I say, make sure you come aboard as a client of mine uh, so that you can get some of those ideas much faster, all right? And uh, you will not miss out on ideas like this by WhatsApp, right? So come aboard as a client. I'll just place the link in the chat again in case you uh, are not one and you have missed out as well. All right, so that would be it, right? So I think, guys, we have pretty much come to the end of this Facebook live show, all right? Uh, if you have found some value so far in this Facebook live show called Ask Me Any Stocks, just type value, all right? Type value in the chat. If you've gotten some value so far, you've learned something, you've taken away something, and not just on this stock, Shane Chong, but for those stocks that I've talked about, type value in the chat. Thank you so much. Or maybe just give me some hearts and likes that would be really helpful as well. Some hearts and likes. Thank you so much. I see a lot of hearts and likes. Awesome, guys. Glad that you guys are still here. So we have like close to 200 of you on board here. And I'm glad that you guys have taken away, all right? So yes, I think that is pretty much it, all right? I pretty much come to the end of this Facebook live show. For those of you who are still here, awesome. Really appreciate um, you just staying all the way to the end. I hope you have found some value as well. And you're picking up of this stock that I shared with you and all the other stocks that you guys were asking about. Um, I will come like, yeah, I mean, if you have missed any single parts, the replays will be on my Facebook page. Just go to Joby Choi Facebook, all right? And that's where you can find the replays as well, all right? Thanks for, thanks, uh, yeah, good to see you here, all right? Thanks, uh, Iris Tan. Thank you. Thanks, Joey, for spending your time sharing with us. Awesome. Get, uh, great, Irene, uh, get, great, Iris. Good to see you here. Glad that you found some value as well. Okay, um, we have uh, Fred out, BD. Thank you, thank you. All right, so awesome. All right, so thank you so much. I think all of you have got some value here. All right, I look forward to see you in the next Facebook Live show. And as I say, if you have not yet done so, go ahead to hit the bell icon. Go to overview on your phone. Hit the bell icon. All right, so that when we go live, you will be notified as well. All right, and you receive like an app notification on Facebook if you have Facebook app on your phone. All right, so Joey here. Thank you so much. Signing off. Look forward to see you. If you miss any parts, look for the replays on my Facebook page. All right. And I look forward to speak with you. If you're not yet a client, come on board once so that you can receive some of our ideas much faster by WhatsApp. I'm sure uh, you, yeah, at least you get some service if you're just doing it alone on your own. All right. So thank you so much. Have a good one. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you.